All right. So we've got Green Tron with a little bit of me mixed in. I got three copies of Approach the Second Sun, obviously, so we can dunk the burn matchup. And then, because we got white for that, we get to play Rips, a couple of paths, some Blessed Alliance, some Secure the Waste, and then we also get to play Horizon Canopy, which Horizon Canopy is like genuinely good in Tron, I think. There's been some iterations of like traditional just straight green Tron that played Horizon Canopy in the past, so I think that's fine. Ah, uh, the imps. Where, where indeed are the imps? Yeah, nobody, nobody needs to see me, see or hear me blow my nose. So, <clears throat> well, we'll mute and hide there. This is a great Tron hand. Turn one Tron piece into a thing, into draw step, cantrip, this. A hand like this. This hand kind of exemplifies one of just the generic powers of Green Tron, which is that like. Your deck is just so consistent in like putting together what you're looking to do. I agree, Jekyll girl. Um, loading up, lo loading up Magic Online after playing both Arena and Artifact is like it's a lot like uh, it's a lot like loading Windows again after having spent a decade on Linux. All right, perfect. So there's my Tower of Power. Blue white control could be blue red tempo, blue red tempo. I guess it could be storm as well. Storm is storm is less good for our for our Trani friends. What's going on, Donovan? Hope you're having a good one. I agree, Pythreon. I am definitely the type of person that prefers real decks as well. Look at the look at the total just I didn't pick my Tron piece, I just gave got the random ones the traders gave me, but you know, getting getting the sweet white border, white border, black border value is good. I think a lot of people are gonna have a hard time following artifact until they can play it. I think that that's definitely gonna be <clears throat> gonna be a thing. I think that's true of card games in general, honestly. Like they're much they're much, much easier once you actually play them. Like having actually played being actually being able to play the game myself alleviated a lot of my worries that that I had about the game. I'm gonna grab Ulamog here so that if we rip a tower we can just destroy them next turn. Yeah, Grix is Grix is his top. I don't think there's a reason why Just Guy Control has been the most successful. Just remember, you're not required. Oh, that was bad. I should have uh, I should have cycled this first. I'm gonna hit a tower and just be really sad. Nope, didn't hit the tower. All right, reman me again, baby. Um, it's okay to not like Artifact, just like it's okay to not like Modern, or it's okay to not like Standard, or it's okay to not like Arena. What will not be allowed here is needless bashing of the platform without without an A, without any logic or reasoning. So I assume this is going to be Gifts Ungiven Untap Kill Me. Yeah, yeah, the Artifact streams are actually already on my... Um, actually, that reminds me, someone reminded me how to tip. I have a... Add a command here. I have an artifact page on my website. Uh, bin the rituals. Nice to see you on your Atari again. Ain't that the truth? 
The blue red deck was really sweet. I, I feel like the after playing the blue red deck, and we're gonna get a better feel for it tonight when we play a couple of the other decks, but I felt like after playing the blue red deck and then the blue black deck, I felt like the blue black deck wasn't actually very good, but it was just good at like showing off the things you could do in artifact. We do have, we do have four copies of Rest in Peace and Two Path to Exiles, which are like, not unrealistic here. Oblivion Stone's pretty bad. Seems fine. All right, let's do it. That's the DLC color. I mean, like, TCGs are like the OG DLC, right? Like, you can buy a starter deck and play the game, but then, like, the rest of the packs are DLC. I think this is a mulligan, not only does it not have a second land or an ancient stirrings to help find one, but it doesn't have like rest in peace or path to exile in it. So like this hand, especially with the scry, I'm gonna gamble on. Since it's got a rip and a map in it. A normal green tron, what's in the approach slot? I have no idea. You have to go look at a normal green tron list. Right? I actually, um, so the Spyro remaster just came out for PlayStation 4, and I borrowed my uh, Matt's PlayStation 4 to be able to play it. Yeah, because Christy, Christy grew up playing Spyro the Dragon, so she was able to, she's been playing that in just like $45 for like a new video game. Uh, this deck is worse than Good Tron, but better than Blue Tron. Wow, that's unlucky. Getcha. <clears throat> Perfect, Yachity. Thank you for the support. I appreciate that. Modern is the enemy of fun magic. Don't don't blame Tron. This is, this is a modern world and Tron's just living in it. Don't, don't blame Tron for modern's fault. Tron did, Tron did nothing wrong. Tower, mine, power plant. All right, this makes it hard to die to, or this makes it hard to die to Past in Flames, and then, or to die to Grape Shot, and then this makes it hard to die to Goblin. So we're in a pretty good spot here. It's my favorite when people are like, but modern's so fun except for these decks. And it's like, well, those are the good decks in modern. So you don't actually like modern. You like playing terrible decks against other terrible decks. And that's fine. You're allowed to like playing terrible decks against other terrible decks, but like at least be honest with yourself about what you're doing while you're doing it. Yeah, so what you like is casual magic, correct. You don't you don't like modern, you like casual magic, which is great. Like casual magic's a lot of fun. Magic's a great game. There's nothing explicitly wrong with casual magic. In fact, there are far more casual magic players than people that play competitive magic. But, like, say, saying you like modern because you like decks that are terrible is like, you know, it's really, it's kind of disingenuous in my opinion. 
How do I feel about Artifact after last night's stream? I feel a lot less bad about it than I did having just watched it. Like, I, I'm gonna be honest, I my expectations were like really low going into playing it last night after watching it a bunch and like reading about it. But after playing it, I actually feel kind of good about it. I am, I am excited to play more tonight. We're gonna be doing more artifact tonight and tomorrow night. All right, let the stone raining begin. And you get a stone rain, and you get a stone rain. Everybody gets a stone rain. This thing ults next turn, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, the casual magic is it trying to play casual magic when you've played anything remotely competitive is tough. And there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. Like I I don't mind like I don't mind like playing magic as like a board game basically. Like someone has like a set of decks that are like well balanced against each other and you like play those. Like they're low power decks, but they play well with each other. So like it's a good game. It's like a, a box game basically. Like Cool Stuff Inc. has a set of uh beginner decks that play well against each other and help you teach you the ins and outs of magic or teach the players the ins and outs of magic. Um, I think this is a keep. Like, Path is technically interaction in this matchup. Like, Tron, Peace. This hand, potentially not a keep because of its lack of rest in peace, but, like, Tron, Peace. Yeah, Tron, Tron Peace, Fear, Ancient Storing. It's, like, hard to pass up. No, I've never really played Jess. So, I think at this point, I actually want to do this and path this, and then I'll just go tower map. Ponder, this card's way better than Ponder. Don't you, don't you sully Ancient Stirring's good name by comparing it to a card as bad as Ponder. This, this card is much, much better than Ponder. To be fair, in a vacuum, Ponder is better than Brainstorm. And I'm not I'm not joking. Ponder is better than Brainstorm. It's just in the context of a format with Fetchlands, Brainstorm is much better. If you if you remove Fetchlands from the equation, Ponder is the much better cantrip on an individual basis. Dear opponent, please don't kill me. Well, that's, I, I'm going to take Eugene here because some of the time they go off with goblins post boards. This insulates me against goblins. Six months and still the way I know to resub is the commercials. It's <laughs> going on, Time Lord? Thanks for the half a year. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me employed here. That's a good reminder. I think Sullivan's list was great. It felt like Sullivan, someone who traditionally likes to play do nothing control deck. So like the fact that Sullivan was on board for the play a control deck that can kill people, which is like been the thing I've been saying constantly in, in standard, like felt really good. Like that's my takeaway every time we play a do nothing control deck in standard is the threats are too good in this format, play cards that kill them. And seeing him just like jam a bunch of div misses to good success felt really felt really uh, satisfying. Felt like this like oh look I, I do know what I'm talking about. All right, remand me, baby. They're pretty likely to have remand here because they didn't do anything. So like if they don't have remand, they're pretty likely to have killed us there. 
LeClaire, thank you for the 33 months. That's such a long time. You're almost another map holder. All right, so they got another remand off of that. That's not good for our hero. They also got a Manamorphose. They made blue, blue. So hopefully they're just can trip in here. We're most likely dead here. Not, not with them making blue, blue. We could die, but it's not super likely at this point. All right, we're dead. Never mind. All right, so we want to drop Path to Exile. If we draw a path to exile, we could be okay here. Rest in peace, you're a little bit late. Yeah, I'm mostly better. One month until our sub baby is born. I think I'll name it Declan too. But <laughs> one Declan is enough. So I know, I know there, I know we're getting remanded here. But I just have to jam, take thirteen, and then hope to hope to stick this next turn and kill him. So we wanted to draw path to exile there because if we would have hit it, we could have pathed this and then played Ugin afterwards because they wouldn't have had enough mana to remand us. That the thirteenth. Thank you for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Definitely, Jackal Girl. I'll make a note. Well, that went better than expected. So we're actually in an okay spot here now because I get to rip them, which means it gets harder. I guess I guess killing me with a grape shot from six is easier is a fair assessment. So I'm probably gonna start plussing Karn aggressively on their hand from here so I can try to not die. You can always see deck lists that are coming up in the deck queue. Oh, that's a good one. It's a good one, chat. All right, so I've got a bunch of mana. Did I just double stone rain them here? I probably just double stone rain them here. When in doubt, stone rain them out. He is a hungry, hungry boy. Next turn, I can double start and them again. But it said GG's. Hopefully, that means not for me. Sweet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna count, I'm gonna count rest in peace as the winner of that match. So like, we kind of have a meme in that, you know, we're playing approach the second son, but like, White and Tron's like genuinely a real thing, right? Just like, rest in peace is quite fantastic. Covers, covers a lot of Tron's harder matchups, like Dredge and stuff. Morning, Anner. Yeah, getting, getting to play Path is not nothing as well. Remember, chat, Tron is a deck that gets to mulligan. You don't have to mulligan. You got to mulligan. Mulliganing is a bonus. You could be stuck keeping that terrible hand. Secure the waste does seem hilarious. I agree. 
The person that submitted this deck said I could screw with the sideboard, so I jammed four rest in peace into it, but I left their copies of Secure the Ways because I agree that it seems hilarious. Yeah, Horizon Canopy is just a genuinely good card in this archetype also. Like, this is an archetype that's played Horizon Canopy in the past. Or Mono, Mono Green Tron has played Horizon Canopy in the past, even without white cards. Is that the scry bug? Of course. So I have a tower, or like a power plant. I don't know, I'll see what they do. Turn turn four card on the place pretty good. Yeah, kind of. They give you... It's like everything in Modern Learnix. You're trading percentage points for different percentage points, effectively. So, by adding, by adding another color, you're, like, giving up points against the field path decks and, like, gaining points against other harder matchups. Uh, they can't tighten here. Unless they have an Azusa. Enjoyed your artifact content last night. Hoping to watch some more this week between eating and shopping. Awesome, Gengar. Yeah, I'm going to be... Even... I think even if... Artifact doesn't end up making for good content, I'm kind of enjoying the game so far. So I'll probably be doing at least a little bit of it. How much I do on stream will probably be dictated by how popular the content is, but... We'll see. We'll see, too. I, I, uh, the feedback I've gotten from a lot of people who have played a bunch of Artifact is that... Um, the feedback I've gotten from a bunch of people who played a bunch of Artifact is that their current constructed format isn't particularly deep or interesting, which, if that's the case, Artifact probably isn't the game for me. Because, like, I prefer to play constructed as opposed to limited. So, if it turns out that their one-set constructed format isn't very good, well, they misclicked, so we have a chance here. Um... If it turns out their constructed format isn't particularly good, I will, uh, I will probably, like, come back to it later. Was that a good draw? What do we, what do we think of that one? I think this one might be good. The software surrounding artifact is everything i have ever wanted in every digital tcg ever it was funny i was talking to i was talking to some of my buddies that i like shoot play card play cards with um and i was like honestly like if you consider magic a 10 out of 10 game i think artifacts gonna be successful even if it's only like a 6 out of 10 game or a 5 out of 10 game just because of how good the surrounding software is for it like just like they they're this is going to be at like the start of their release they have more features than i've ever seen in any other digital card game that i've wanted just like everything from the the constructed gauntlet that they have to try to the in-game tournaments that people can set up just like there's all these things that i've always been like these are things i've asked for from every other card game and like artifacts just doing it so unlike a lot of the other digital card games that i dip into here um there are a ton of how to play artifact videos because it's a big it's a big it's a big game title so it's not like the warhammer card game or anything like that that i've been playing or hex where like i've made all the content for it there is there is a ton of artifact content out there man if their two of their last three cards are another amulet plus a primeval titan they could actually kill us this turn potentially Arena is very good software. I like I like Arena a lot. Um, in terms of like the features that Artifact has out the gate, it just really can't hold a candle to it though. How long before Paper Magic ends? I don't think in the general sense, Paper Magic will ever end. Paper Magic has a very strong 
basis as a casual game that people play together with friends. But I think if Magic's going to keep up in an ever-changing landscape, competitive Magic needs to stop being paper. The the pro tour and stuff like that we need to we need to move past paper magic from a competitive aspect from a from a coverage from a coverage perspective from a i know hindsight's 2020 but should we have popped o stone there last turn to not give the opponent any outs no i don't think so i think i'd i think i'd much rather like kill a titan when, it, when it's attacking me like this this setup is fine for me like i'm gonna stone rain them play a card and stone rain them like, we're super far ahead here. Yeah. Casual magic is a majority of the player base. Between between cheating and coverage not being accessible and, like, all these other things, just, like, competitive magic needs to go the way of digital. Is the is the thing that needs to happen. Yeah, no shuffling, fast matches, no cheating, no judge calls. Like, you want to... Any, anybody who tells me digital shouldn't be the future of competitive magic, go watch anytime there's a judge call on magic coverage and tell me that digital shouldn't be the future. Sure, but nobody actually wants to play Legacy. Legacy sucks. Magic's, magic's a tough game, chat. Magic's, magic's a tough game. Tron, 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 Tron. Yeah, Friday Night Magic and people playing with friends, that's where that's where Paper Magic will turn into. I think that's fine. I think that's a good place for it to be. In in my less than humble of opinions, the gameplay in Legacy sucks. It's a, it's a format where 25 years worth of cards are legal and like there's less playable cards than they exist in modern. Path in. Ah, uh, yeah, Path's pretty good. It's a good suggestion. Am I cutting? Ballista's not very good. Path's a good suggestion. Thank you. Went 11 4 at GP Milwaukee. Standard is great. But I had a judge call and a pro angle shoot me. I don't. Here's, here's the thing. I think the idea of angle shooting is nonsense. In fact, people talking about angle shooting is part of the reason why why I, I think competitive, why I'm not playing more paper competitive magic and why I think paper competitive magic needs to go away. Here's the thing. It's not angle shooting. Either it's allowed by the rules and it's okay, or it's not allowed by the rules so there's cheating. There's, there's nothing in the middle. You getting got because you didn't understand the rules or you messed up because you didn't know the rules, there's nothing wrong with that. You shouldn't have fucked up. You should play the game by the rules and you should understand the rules of the game you're playing. Angle shooting is a term that people who are uneducated use to make themselves feel better because they got punished for making mistakes. It feels bad to get punished for making a mistake because you don't know the rules, but you know what? If you educated yourself and you knew the rules, you wouldn't get punished for not knowing them. Sorry. I feel very strongly about that. Because attitudes like that, that playing the game by the rules is angle shooting, that's why judge calls are rancid on coverage. Do you feel that baiting is gamesmanship? Yeah, I think it's all it's all fine. Get your opponent to make mistakes. Punish them for making mistakes. Is there a waste in our deck? There's not a waste in our deck, is there? Did I miss that? That was a planes. That was a planes, Pikes. You confused me. You confused me for a hot second there. That was a planes I bottomed. Nope. No, it doesn't. 
Every every time someone describes what they tell me is angle shooting, what they're actually referring to is they messed up or somebody messed up and they got punished because they didn't play by the rules. I said, when you declare you want to go to combat, I cast on your vanguard. And he said, I let him go to combat and he gets gets the trigger. What is what is the trigger have to do like in that situation what is what does the trigger have to do there what is what is what is it one what does the trigger have to do with whatever with the cast down and two you technically use the wrong vernacular there the correct one there's no trigger on a Dante Vanguard. Two, the correct verbiage, if you understand the rules, is enter combat. At enter combat, as you are entering combat, I'm going to cast down your card. Yeah, there's no there's no trigger on a Dante Vanguard as well. Beginning of combat. At the beginning of combat, when you enter combat, those are those are the vernacular you're looking for. Oh. Okay, so you're saying inside of your main phase. So your issue is that you uh, we're dead. Um, they have double double thing. Sure, sure. So then you then you really use the wrong vernacular because what you need to say is to clearly communicate during your main phase is what you wanted to express. That, that's where you wanted to do the thing. And the correct thing to say is, it, during your main phase, I am going to cast down your thing. Sure, so during your main phase is what you need to communicate there. You don't even need to say the past priority thing. When they say, with, when your opponent says enter combat, and you're like, during your main phase, I'm gonna kill your thing. Uh, this hand doesn't have a Karn yet, but it's got turn three Tron, so let's do it. It's it's really bad, Gorks. So honestly, I yeah, just yeah. This matchup's super rough for Tron. It is if you don't draw if you don't draw a card, it's really bad. So you need to keep fast drawn hands then and then hope to have a card. And again, like I get that it feels bad, but like messing up and then blaming angle shooting I think is nonsense. Like if you just understand the rules of the game, you're not going to be in positions like that. Just not. You're just not. And just double amulet two games in a row. All right. So I think I want to make green here. So that way we can draw nature's claim and kill one of these. Can trip in. Can trip in. Kill me. All right, so dead to uh, bounce land premium evil titan. Yeah, the this and this is the same thing that comes from every issue of people trying to, to claim angle shooting. Clearly communicate with your opponent. If you are either intentionally or unintentionally not clearly communicating with your opponent during a match of paper magic, and you get got because of it. You, you, something happens that you didn't want to happen. Do you know? Do you know why that happened? Because you didn't clearly communicate with your opponent. Clear communication happens zero them. You know how many times I've been angle shot and gotten got by the rules in two thousand matches of sanctioned magic at competitive REL. Fucking zero times because I understand the rules of the game. One, we don't know what was said. We're just hearing secondhand from a person who feels like they got slighted. Two, what they said didn't clearly communicate what they what they wanted to hear. 
I had turn four Ulamog, but with double amulet, I'm literally dead there. They attacked me with a 10 power double strike Titan that turn for people that, for people that aren't, uh, for people that aren't familiar with how the type primeval Titan deck works. <laughs> 24? No, it's, it's 20, right? It's 10, it's 10, 10, 10 twice. The whole angle shooting business is just nonsense. Just. You can't over communicate. Yep. It's, just re it's really, it's really easy. Just clarify all the time what's going on. I stream every Monday at this time. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm here in the morning. Start about 9 a.m. So we're not gonna have Tron until turn five till turn four. That's fine. Your power plan here. Yeah, you can subscribe using this link on mobile. If angle shooting isn't a thing, what do I blame? Miscommunication? Yeah, you should blame your inability to communicate what you wanted to do. You should blame your not under... Claiming you got angle shot, in my opinion, is a lot like blaming the auto-tapper for losing you a match on Magic Arena. Sure, you could blame the auto-tapper for the thing that you did, or you could be an adult and take responsibility for your actions and be like, Oh, I messed up and I lost because I messed up and I feel bad that I lost because I messed up, but I could not mess up in the future and not lose because of it. Yes, these and these reasons, this discussion that we're having right now is why I'm done playing Paper Magic after the Invitational. It's just very unpleasant because there's a ton of people who don't understand the rules who then want to blame their opponent because the opponent didn't give them a free takesy backsies and didn't get didn't hold their hand during a match of competitive magic where both players paid you know a hundred dollars to be there two three hundred dollars to be there if you account travel costs like it's complete and utter nonsense yes I have been actively made feel bad and had people harass me and call me names for making people play games of magic by the rules. You want a, a recent example? Look at the last tournament I played in. Look at look at the result of what happened from the Battle of Wits match on camera. I hope you have children, the great enigma. If you don't have children, I might have to find you for that joke. So we're dead. Hey, Tron, 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 Tron. It just costs me way too much money to go to a magic tournament to not enjoy it. So like, if I can't have fun going to a magic tournament, there's no reason for me to spend, you know, the thousand dollars it costs to go to a tournament for the weekend. Magic's really easy when you play Tron, chat. Magic. Magic's really easy when you play Tron. Do you have any tips for managing your clock better on Magic Online? Yeah, think while your opponent's timer is ticking down and learn how to use the auto pass hotkeys. So it was funny. So I'm one of those people who reads contracts before I agree to them and sign them, which is wild, I know. As someone who knows the rules of Magic, 
and like reads contracts for the sign them so that wendy's promotion we did on stream recently i was reading the fine print of it and it included it mentioned playing this video in the fine print we didn't play ugin because ugin doesn't exile hollowed one because it's colorless it's a good question i should have mentioned that um but i'm reading the fine print and it mentioned playing this video in several parts so i like emailed my twitch rep and i was like hey is there a video for this? I don't see a video linked anywhere in the documentation. And they were like, oh, that was just bad copy paste. So we like, there actually isn't a video for this one. I was like, oh, okay. And they were like, this has been running for a while and nobody else has pointed this out. They must not have actually read all of it. And I was like, yeah, sounds like it. Uh, there will not be any standard today. So you can always find my schedule on my website and my schedule includes what formats I'm playing on which days generally. So my standard days are Tuesday, Wednesday, and uh, Thursday this week. They've been to third blood gas. So thankfully, oh, please bring these back. Please bring these back. This is, our, my, this is, this was loose on my opponent's part. My opponent should have uh, not declined bringing these back because now we get to Ugin them. RS2, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me employed here. Man, this, this game just did a total 360. Yeah, it's weird. I play magic by the rules and I read the fine print before I click accept. It's weird. Can we get a Jeff reading contract stream? Listen, just put some Netflix on. Put some music in and read through it. Hit the important parts. A lot of it's, there's a lot of, once you've read a bunch of EULs, there's a lot of boilerplate that's the same in all of them, but there are fine details in a lot of them that matter and are different. We found him, the end user. How many flame wakes we got in here? There's three flame wakes in here. Oh, I should have played the sphere. No, I just, I was just on autopilot, Master Chief. So 10 out of 10 should have played this. I'm actually going to be a turn behind now. Poor Eugene. Or a card behind. Like I'd get two shots to try and piece for next turn to cast this. Instead I only get one now. That's a pretty big deal. So if I draw a two mana Tron piece here, I could have, uh, yeah. So like now I only have, wait, this is, yeah, this is six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so if I would have, um, if I would have played, if I would have played this last turn, I actually could have cast Ulamog here, and now I can't because of my missequencing. Hey, we had a we had a tip there from Kyle. We had a couple of resubs in there too. Hold on, let me click my Vince thing. Sorry for being a doofus. It's okay. I was probably a little aggressive. I just feel very strongly, and I'm sorry about that. Thank you for the support. I hope you had a good weekend overall. Eleven four is a good record. Don't let, don't let people get to you. If you had fun, that's the most important thing that matters. What's going on, Pythreon? I played KCI for the first time. I like it way more than expected. Sounds good. Yeah, it might, the queue probably might not be thought until 2019. Usually it's about four to six weeks to work it back down. All right, so... I think I just gained seven here, right?
feel like I need to say that a lot, Subligar, because like there's a lot of people who the type of mindset magic tends to attract. I feel like there's a lot of people who like lose sight of the forest through the trees, right? Like they they forget the reason that they started playing magic. Like I've met and interacted with and spent time with a lot of people who have gotten burnt out on magic. And like, I've been burnt out on magic before. And I definitely think the cause for why I got burnt out was because I was approaching a game, the game in a way that wasn't good. All deck submissions are $1, nope. Nope, not even a little. What's going on, Anna? Hope you're having a good Monday. I spent 20 hours playing Lantern last week and grounded $8 profit. Happiness can't beat that. God bless. God bless us, everyone. Yep. And honestly, if you find yourself not having fun with magic, but you still kind of want to play magic, my best advice is change formats. Like the most important thing to remember about magic is that magic isn't one game. It's a rules engine for a bunch of different smaller games. So you can, you can play, you can play magic in a lot of different ways. Came here for the fire sale at Black Green Rock. Stop it. Get out of here. Is the freeze still through denying? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, I agree, Darnia. Has your costume collection expanded in preparation? Oh, that means I need to I need to actually um I need to find pirate and elf costumes. So I can, I can put up donation goals to add those to the Invitational. If I'm accepting decks that look bad again. No, I reject bad decks constantly. The opponent's library size is currently five. Do 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 All right, what am I doing? I think I want I want swags. I want a couple of rips. I want some paths. I think I want some nature's claims. I actually can't stream on Black Friday. I'm planning to stream a bunch on Thanksgiving on Thursday, but I need to take Friday off, I think, at least during the day. I might do an evening stream Friday. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be live most of the day on Thursday. What am I, what am I cutting here? Memes giving. I think we're I think we're playing arena on Friday or Thursday, sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't actually know if this is a rip matchup, honestly. So it might not be actually. I think the same could work on Magic Online, sure, but I think it would take them four years to implement it, so I ask. We've not won any games with approach. Do 
That's true. Appro wait, approach kind of won that game. The game, the game seven off approach was very relevant last game. Whenever I see people streaming standard on Magic Online, it makes me sad. It's like, oh, you could be playing something pretty. I wonder how many days of my life have been spent with my opponents down on clock. play a star here and just plan to path something this turn feel so players take longer on moto or arena definitely on magic online because magic online doesn't magic online doesn't actually punish you until you hit zero whereas arena kind of speeds you up as you go along Well, I think part of that, Micah Mind, is that a lot of those people are people who have been just been streaming Magic for forever and people hate change. And a lot of them have collections built up and don't want to spend money on Arena. Uh, Modo stands for Magic Online with Digital Objects. It's a very old acronym. MTG Finance hating Arena is secretly the best part about Arena. No, I don't think that's the case, Darkwater. They're always going to have to add new sets to Magic Online because they need those cards to impact for Modern and Legacy. Like, they're already moving away. They're already moving away from Standard and Draft on Magic Online. Like, the, the what's it called? The Magic Online Championship in 2019 doesn't involve any Standard or Limited for the first time ever. It's all Modern, Legacy, Vintage, and Pauper. Because those are the formats that they're going to focus on on Magic Online, while Standard and Limited are moved to focus on Arena. That's, that's the big thing. The fact that you don't get punished for, like, not buying cards ASAP is fantastic. They actually got rid of competitive EDH SCTR. They straight up cut the one-on-one -on -one commander queue, I believe. Or am I, or was I, am I thinking about something else? I thought I thought I remember them getting rid of that. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. They got rid of Brawl. Okay, Brawl is what they killed. You're right. Gross.
night. Need to do Tron things. Hey, look, chat. It's a Tron thing. Come Tron away. Come Tron away. Come Tron away with me. Tron, 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 Tron. One worm coil, please. I had a long conversation with my buddy today about casual paper magic. Arena is a good option to play a lot of the fix free. It is. It really is. They do have two copies of Ancient Grudge in their bin here. Maybe I'm supposed to play Ugin because of the two copies. Now, I guess I want to be able to block this hollowed one, right? I don't want to take this hit. They have a bird over here, too. How much to add a SOG request? The baby worms come later. We are gonna have baby worms very soon, to be fair. Goodbye, friends. We are at five. We are at five. All right, they've had enough. How are we doing, folks? Welcome. Good morning. Hope everyone's having a great day we're over here in the world. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer, memer, magic content producer on Twitch, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you find yourself enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. My subscribers are the people that keep me employed here full-time. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without their wonderful support. Past subscribing, you can also support my stuff by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. Hey, Aries Razors would like to help you get that nice, close, clean shave. Just because you like playing the Degenerate decks doesn't mean you need to look like one. Using code Jeff Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Google Shave, you can save $5 on your brand new starter kit with them. We currently have 93 people that have used my wonderful Harry's code. And if just seven more use my code between now and the end of November, I'm going to use my wonderful Harry's razors to clean shave my face for the first time in a couple of years. So if you want to see that and get a great product in the meantime, be sure to check them out. Cardsphere.com will love to help you turn your cards into other cards directly to the players. There's no haggling and they just take a 1% fee off of the top. InkedGaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using code JEFF12, you can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. You can upload your own custom artwork or choose from the wide range of custom artwork they have on their website. You can find some of my wonderful own Hooglandia-themed playmats up there for purchase as well. And of course, speaking of Hooglandia, I'd like to welcome everyone out there to Hooglandia. Thanks for dropping by our little slice of the internet here today. I know there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch and YouTube and wherever you might be watching this. And I appreciate you choosing to spend part of your time here with us. Speaking of YouTube, on a temporary basis for the next month, I have uh, I've re-enabled comments on my YouTube videos. So smash that like button and leave a comment below if you're watching this at some point in the future. I'm interested to see uh, how that does for my engagement levels on YouTube and seeing if enabling comments helps grow my channel faster there, as I've been told that that is the case. No Shave November. Now I'm an, I'm an adult who like goes to adult functions like interacts with other people. I don't do no shame November, no shave November. The comments so far on my YouTube video have been surprisingly pleasant. I can enable others to moderate my YouTube comments. I haven't felt the need to do so yet. We'll see. I did post my first artifact videos up there yesterday. So we'll see how those go.
Do you have a ghost quarter in your deck too? Another field of rune. Okay. This is definitely a matchup where only having three basics could punish us. I actually added a third basic to the list that was submitted to me. So I'm a big, big fan of having basic lands. Third time's the charm, opponent. Third time's the charm. Opponent's not actually playing a fair deck. They're playing a combo deck, and we're actually in trouble because they could combo kill us next turn. So they get to crack all these clues. We're dead to a Duskwatch Recruiter or a Walking Ballista. I told my opponent if they had the Walking Ballista they can play it and I'll concede. We'll see if they... Yeah, it looks like they just have it naturally. Yeah, they have, they have a lot of clues. We're pretty, pretty likely to be dead there. I, in fact, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move along with my life. Do they ship to Europe? I'm not sure how fan, you have to check their, you have to check their FAQ. It's too, it's too early on a Monday to play against tedious combo decks. How much of the GP did I watch? Basically zero. Gritsy and I spent a bunch of time looking at houses over the weekend. Which I think we actually found one we're gonna make an offer on, which is exciting. All right, is turn three worm too slow on the draw? Probably. Oh my god, I clicked the star instead of the map. Mm, it's early. That's fine. We we're probably dead anyways. Will I still be living near a cornfield? Yeah, there's actually, there's actually literally a field right behind the new house we're looking at. So our current house is like in the center of town, but like the nicer, slightly newer houses are, are all towards like the edge of Bloomington, the Bloomington normal area. So a lot of them are like actually more directly cornfield adjacent than our current home. Yep. Hey, mobile lets you sub and share your sub now. It does. Uh, only only Android, I believe, though. I don't believe iOS gets to gets to sub and resub. So I assume I'm losing worm coil here. Uh, 
All right. You ever resolve the card cruel ultimate? No, I wasn't really playing standard then. Uh, we took Tron and we put three bad cards in it and it was still Tron and did Tron things in some amount of the matches. Um, it's about what I got. The approach actually won us one of the games against Hollowed One because it just straight up gained us seven for seven and that was fine. So, you know, could have been, could have been worse. <laughs> 